Okay, give it a second. All right, we're online. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. First, welcome to the uh, South Africa podcast uh, here at 8 o'clock uh, CAT at uh, 2 a.m. EST. Uh, tonight we have a very special guest, uh, Cajun Fox. Uh, say hello. Hello, everybody. And, of course, uh, presenting us alongside me, myself, uh, Ivik, and then, obviously, Scratch. What up? And Anapa. Sorry. <laughs> I would look, I mean, I was going so well, and then I just screwed it up at the end. <laughs> he always screw up my name for some yeah, reason. Yeah, because I keep on thinking accretion, anapa, and inpa, and at the end of the day, I get, a, I get so confused. <laughs> I probably should just change it back. Well, too late now. Not yeah. really. Well, I mean, actually, for this podcast, actually, it, it, actually, it is a little bit too late because yeah, I I used the new names for quite a lot of things, mm-hmm. so it's actually kind of shit. To, you can't change like your name everywhere. Yeah. But, oh well. I don't care. I, I I actually like the name. Yeah. Mm. So anyway, we've got Cajun Fox. Um, he's involved with the uh, Camp Feral. You're setting up and things like that as well, right? You're helping out there. Yep, yep. Yeah. And that's obviously in like what, four days now? Uh well it's it's not quite four days, thankfully. Uh one, two, three oh my god, it is in four days. <laughs> <laughs> I saw I saw a Twitter uh a, a Twitter I saw a Twitter and uh, they were tweeting and the uh, tweet said that four days to go, OMG. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, it's on Thursday. Oh, oh man. <laughs> Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> t- talking of that, uh, 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 of Camp Feral, is the guys sure. up in Johannesburg also at this little camp thing that they're running, and it seems to actually do quite well. Yeah, it wasn't bad. I mean, obviously, I was there, I was semi involved in whatever the hell else was going on. But this is not lodges and stuff, they actually go out and camp in tents. Yeah. Oh. My my mattress, uh, I was borrowing it, obviously. It had a slow leak, so like it would be full of air when I got onto it, and then like by the next morning, I'd be sleeping on the ground. Yeah. It was amazing. I loved it so much. <laughs> <laughs> like, that was a good thing? It sounds like a bad thing. <laughs> yeah. No, look, the amount of drunk that happened that like over that weekend because I mean it was a long weekend for us so we started on the Saturday and then went all the way through the Monday and then yeah I don't know like that Monday was also quite odd as well Um, but yeah I mean there were 16 furs and I mean this is off of bad planning and bad like or at least sort of self-confessed bad not necessarily bad planning in fact (laughs) the planning was absolutely amazing you're gonna get so much shit I'm gonna get so much shit (laughs) someone's gonna be very upset with you what I'm, I would actually mean to say is, is that when it came to like um, uh, putting the word out there and things like that, there were like only a few channels used, and even then, like it was it was off of WhatsApp, which isn't necessarily the best channel to use, um, and like nowhere else was there advertised. But the thing is, is that in that same sense, uh, a lot of us had known about it for a while, and only like a week before the camp actually started telling other people about it. So we can take a little bit of blame in respect to this. I mean, I've spoken to to Wolfers about it, and Wolfers was, you know, he was angry at first, and then sort of got over it. We sort of said sorry, and there were hugs, and it was amazing. And then, you know, and then camp continued. And yeah, I mean, we we literally like the 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 Sunday morning. We started drinking at like nine o'clock. I know a couple of furs who started drinking like heavily at nine o'clock. We're, we're talking about almost two liters of wine, kind of, uh, um, like, drinking heavily. <laughs> it was oh, wow. fucking insane. And then we started playing darts at, like, four, no, after we played Magic. And so, like, there was a whole bunch of stuff, and then at one point somebody complained about us as well. Our noise level was too high. Um, <clears throat> <laughs> she was heavily racist about it as well, which was absolutely annoying. Oh, uh, no. Yeah, no, she said that we acted like a whole bunch of black people. Oh, wow. And okay. necessarily using the word black people like that, she she literally used the Afrikaans wonderful term of it. And, uh, ah. Yeah. And uh, we were very, very unimpressed because all of us were actually in bed just around about quarter past 11 that evening. And uh, she said that she was like, she heard us like carrying on at about one. So I'm about, I, I'm, I'm pretty much saying that like if it was synchronized snoring, that would probably be it. But I mean, like, it, I'm pretty sure that, that sound doesn't travel that far. 
You'd be surprised. Ten poles are super thin. Yeah, no, this is a fair point, but she was also, like, at least 150 meters away. Oh, wow. Just to piss her off, I would have a... planned synchronized howling. Actually, you know what oh, we, we you know what I did? Um, later the, the next evening, like, the kids were playing around in some of the fields, so I randomly <laughs> snuck up behind them and, like, started chasing them around and made them howl. <laughs> it was okay. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 yeah. I, I could have come across as like a pedophile, but I wasn't. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you did. I didn't. Yeah, you did. She was there, and I was there, and we were like, okay, cool, let's play a game. And like, I got all these, like, the kids just randomly stopped by me, and I was just kind of sitting there going, like, okay, what now? Um, okay, cool, you're part of my side, they're running away, let's scare the living crap out of them. Okay, hide in the bushes. <laughs> wow. Whoa, Gajin, what is happening? Uh, I don't know what's happening. Those mics are scratching. Oh, no. Oh, did my mic crackle? Oh, apologize there. Sorry no, no. That. I don't know who's scratching. <laughs> so, yeah, that was that was pretty much our camp. Uh, like I said, like 16 people at best. But the thing is, is that it, it could have been so much bigger. And if it is so much bigger, like we can actually book out the entire area and have no one else bother, the, bother us. And then we'll be loud and annoying as much as we possibly can. <clears throat> yeah. My uh, my weekend was a little bit more relaxed, but still kind of fun. Mm. We lost the Dota finals at my flat, which is pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> I still find that to be so funny. You, with a prize pool of eighteen million dollars in total, you can't really not like. Okay, you kind of have to start taking it seriously eventually. Oh wow. Competitive gaming, eighteen million dollars. Holy shit! Yeah, the, that's the a lot winning, of money. The winning team went away with um, six point six between the five of them. Fuck it. And sorry, what game was this for? Uh, Dota two. Oh, okay. Everybody's starting to think like maybe I could start doing that. <laughs> yeah, well, it's not like CPL tournaments anymore. I mean, usually then the, the prizes was like fucking stupid. Uh, back when, uh, back in the days of like Jonathan Vitality and those guys, the prizes were there, yeah. but it was it wasn't that much. That's yeah, actually he pretty. Wants to thermal take though. That's actually pretty impressive, but it shows you yeah. how the video game market. It, it, in actual fact, um, I read an article of the year that the video game market completely surpassed the the, the film industry, in how much revenue is generated. So. Well, I mean, if you look at Let's Players these days, I mean, come on, what's it? PewDiePie makes seven point five million dollars a yeah, year. Yeah, but, but that that is a niche thing that they do. That is not really what I'm talking about in the video game market. That but if not... you want to talk about the video game market, you can't discredit the Let's Players. No, I will. That's true. Well, uh, they <laughs> they help the people get through the games in most cases. I I think the reason why people actually watch it is because they sometimes get stuck. And then they uh, start watching it, and then all of a sudden, okay, now uh, they realize that it's actually quite funny watching these, and then they keep on watching it. That's, in my opinion, actually what happens. I mean, but... Yeah, mine, yeah, mine kind of just started that as, a, as looking for a review of a game. And then it just went from there. But what I, what I mean about the video game market is I'm talking about something like Grand, Grand Theft Auto, right? The amount of revenue they generated with that game within the first 24 hours... It's insane. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Also, the uh, freaky image that Raccoon posted. Um, yeah, agreed. Freaky. Thank you very much. I'm scarred <laughs> for life now. Uh, uh, so anyway, so like uh, Camp Feral planning. How's that going? Right. <laughs> uh, it, well, it's, uh, it's it's going pretty well. They, uh, uh, I mean, the planning for that con starts when the basically the previous year's con ends. And they start thinking about things like what's the theme going to be next year and all that. So we have all that ready. What next year's theme is, what the next few years' themes are, things like that. But of course, got to keep them secret. <laughs> I'm not allowed to say anything about them. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, it's a little bit different than your standard convention because they, uh, rather than having you know a hotel to deal with and all that, we they have a it's a it's a camp. Yeah. So they actually deal with a specific uh, company that owns a large. Uh, it's it's in essence a children's camp. 
um, and we, we sort of rent it out for the, uh, the five or six days or whatever it is. And then uh, it comes along with camp counselors. So we actually get people who work at the camp. It's usually it's a bunch of, of, I think it's all family run. So it's a bunch of the same people. And they'll, they'll get the archery stuff ready. And they've got like kayaking and they've got, um, oh, sorry, my dog's barking somewhere. No, no, uh, they've no. got kayaking, they've got uh, sailing, swimming in the lake, all kinds of other games. And of course, games put on by the staffers themselves. Mm. Uh, I saw so. a video of a dude jump in the lake with a fursuit on. Why would you do that? Uh, <laughs> yes, okay, so there is that guy. <laughs> <laughs> um, that is one of the, that is definitely a, it's kind of one of those things like, you know, when you watch like a TV show and something really crazy awesome happens, but they save that one single scene. It only happens once and it happens on like the 12th episode. Mm. Him, you, the people using the footage of the, him jumping in the lake was a, it was literally a one-time thing. We said, for the purpose of videotaping, we'll let you jump in the lake, but we have five lifeguards standing nearby and you have to have a flotation device under your, um, under your fursuit, like a full, full vest, mm -hmm. and you have to have, we have like, a person's going to be in the water with a rope to pull you out and all that stuff, so, so yes, he jumped in the water and made it seem like it was just this really normal thing of him jumping in the water, but really it was like a, it was, it was like planned more out. planned like a jackass stunt, like, <laughs> yeah, it was, in essence, and we were, like, the Camp Pharaoh, we were kind of like, I won't say against it, but we, we, we really didn't want it to be done because you're not really supposed to do that. It is really unsafe. And then we didn't want people seeing the video and then going, oh, well, you know, we go to Camp Farrell and we just jump in the lake with our fursuits. And people don't realize that when a fursuit gets wet, they're like 60 to 70 pounds, you know, of, of water. And it's really hard to swim in them. So mm. Yeah, that would be uh, but, basically like jumping in with like a full military backpack. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> um, but he, the guy that did it, he's a nice guy, and he took all the responsibility of like, yes, I'll do this. I'm, I'm going to do, make sure it's really safe. And then he did it. He jumped in. He swam around for a bit. Uh, it also helps that the guy is, uh, I'm pretty sure he's a professional diver, um, uh -huh. among other skills he had. So uh, it was really cool to have him jump in the lake. And I think it's been now used in like every promotional video anyone has ever put for the, the convention. So wow, yeah, hmm. that's some intense stuff. And on, I'm, yep. gonna, I'm gonna sneeze quickly. Just give me a sec. Yeah. Okay, and then. it's gone. Okay. Go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Moving um, on. In in regards of uh, uh, something like Camp Feral, uh, what do you do for like a uh, proper dinner meal thing? That's uh, that's one thing that I actually really would like to find out from other convention owners and whatnot. Okay. Well, in the case of uh, Camp Feral, what they do is uh, the campsite itself has a full uh, they call it the main lodge, and inside the main lodge, there's a full, full restaurant-grade kitchen, like gigantic kitchen, um, and there's uh, it's staffed with cooks and chefs and things like that. So in the case of Camp Farrell, they um, every meal is cooked for you, and it's done like a cafe style, like a buffet style, I guess, mm -hmm. where they they lay out all the food in the center table. Everyone comes up, they grab their food, sit down and eat, and then everyone sort of eats together. It's exactly what would happen at um, South Africa, by the way. Yeah. Oh. Uh, and, and I'm just thinking because we, we are planning on holding like a big um, braai now for those that's listening that don't know that's the South African equivalent of the American barbecue right. uh, but better <laughs> yeah. yeah well yeah and um, for the for one of the nights either the, I think it's going to be the Saturday night obviously so it yep. It sounds like a good idea, but then again, if there's 50 people, it might not be such a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, how many people are you looking to, like... Around, around, that, around that value, yes, 50. 50 and okay. up, actually. 50 and up a little bit, but also no more than a certain amount. Right, yeah. So yeah, I guess you have to cut it off. So we, we, we're kind of looking at something like that, but... Then I'm thinking, okay, maybe like a like a like a spit roast braai thing, right? Where oh, we nice. have entire lamb on it, but I don't think that the place that the venue would have or oh, like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess you probably need some pretty big machinery, right? Like a big, big, uh, full animal rotisserie system. Well, I have. One. Yeah. yeah but, <laughs> oh, well, perfect. So no, it's it's not just that. It's actually the fact that you have to make a big fire somewhere <laughs> at work. <laughs> yeah, 
No, it's 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 true. And the thing is, is that like I mean, um, it's it's not too difficult to get like rotisserie systems and things like that in in South Africa. I mean, like the one bar that I tend to frequent, if you if you rent a place out and you're like, cool, we want lamb, they literally have like a rotisserie system for that, and like you sit there and they cook your lamb for you, like a massive full lamb. And you're just sitting there going like, yay. <laughs> mm. Although, you know, lamb again. Luckily we don't do we have no we don't. We don't have any like sheep furs. We only have bovine, one bovine. <laughs> Gore. But yeah, I mean the, I'm I'm pretty sure Bloom like yeah, you know, we're gonna research this, but I'm very sure Bloom will have to have a like a spit roasting kind of service there. Like, Look, at, at, at best Mr. I mean Mystic yeah, Blue Mr. would have something. Yeah, and Mr. Spit is like a national chain, so I'm pretty sure they have something for that. That's a horrifying yeah. name, by the way. Yeah, Mr. Well, Spit. <laughs> welcome to Mr. Spit. How can I help you, man? Yes. <laughs> can I have something with a little less spit in it? Is that possible? <laughs> no? Okay, great. No, no. Yeah, but, but that's kind of like one of the traditions that we have here. Uh, it's unlike normal things. When we talk about the party where there's drinking and meals, there's always going to be a braai involved. Uh, uh, like I said, that type of... Uh, on, Bring it. on wood barbecue thing with actual T-bone steaks and whatnot. Oh, mm. but it's well, even, even steaks are a little bit out of the ordinary. You do like choppies or burger balls or whatever. Yeah, the steaks are like my staple braai food. <laughs> mm. it's that, slowly but that and pork char pork like the what do you call it? That massive steak, Texan oh, steak. Oh, Texan steak. Well, that that feeds like four. It feeds four, like me. Just off for it, a weekend. It can't feed one if you're hungry enough. It feeds me. What does that thing weigh again? Like, uh, it's actually pretty. It's, it's a kilo. Yeah, 1. it's a kilo. kilo. Like after brying it, it's about a kilo, possibly less, maybe about seven hundred grams. Yeah. It's huge. <laughs> uh, we're actually having a barbecue tonight. Uh, after after this, I have a whole bunch of friends coming over. That or, sounds. Uh, I guess fun. a braai. <laughs> You make it a braai. Do it the South African way. Don't use gas. Don't don't use. Uh, don't even use charcoal. Use wood. <laughs> okay. Well, I do have a fire pit, so uh, we could easily grill everything on there. Hashtag got wood. God damn it. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, look. Uh, come on. It was open. It was there. It yeah. Okay. Fine. I'll. You know, a A plus for taking the opportunity. But god damn it, man. You're a bloody welcome. Anyway, yeah, so um, for those of you who just joined, uh, again, Cajun Fox is here with us tonight. He's a Canadian for, um, he's also uh, working with Camp Feral. We're pretty much talking about Camp Feral things and Canadian yep. things, hashtags mm. everywhere. Camping things and convention <laughs> things and whatnot. <laughs> the hell is pretty pop? I think it's just like plain millipop. Um, mi millipop. With gravy. Mm, I wouldn't do it with gravy, like tomato or what's it? The uh, uh, tomato relish. Yes, the tomato relish with like onions and tomatoes and like yeah, mm. yes. Okay, anyway. I have that in age, like pop and oh. Bacon maple syrup. Are you serious? Does that actually, <laughs> does that actually go well together? Because we actually had an yeah. argument about this today. Uh, we I, were talking I had, about there was a comma in there. <laughs> it's bacon, comma maple syrup. Yeah, no, but I mean, maple syrup goes goes well with everything for... No, uh, yeah, trust me, B bacon and maple syrup, yes, yes, yes. The argument that we had today is that this guy had, uh, had this thing that he created, oh, it's a photo online, of chocolate and bacon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. That just uh, that just doesn't go together, I'm sorry. <laughs> it uh, It's surprisingly popular here. Oh, but, well... Um... <laughs> It's uh, it's definitely a fair a fairground thing or a uh, like a like a big event thing. Uh, you go when you go to like a carnival or something like that. They've got the weird carnival foods. It's it's there usually. So there's usually a stand that's got chocolate covered bacon and it's three little bacon strips dipped in like Hershey's syrup <laughs> for for like seven dollars. So. Not like actual chocolate, just like chocolate sauce. Uh, sometimes it's actual chocolate. It's but it's usually some kind of cheap chocolate sauce because it's a it's carnival. It's a fair, right? They're gonna try to yeah. cheap out as as much as they can. Yeah, I, I still want to try funnel cake. I funnel saw, cake looks oh. like something. It's amazing. It is very good. But um, I saw the whitest thing. 
Uh, no, it's a one of the whitest thing. Whitest, whitest, thing. whitest. Okay. Yeah, I was at a um, uh, the Good Food and Wine Festival in Cape Town a while back, and they had um, Sauvignon slushies, like white wine cooled down to a slushy consistency. What? That is the single, like, in suburban white mom's kind of thing I've ever seen in my life. What does it have? Like a, a side order of Ritalin? I, I don't know. <laughs> I get in or something. Vicodin. <laughs> <laughs> it's like some of your slushies with your side order of Vicodin. Get it and now. <laughs> I'm like, why would you do that? That has to be like the grossest swill wine for you to actually like just decide. Okay, this isn't good enough to sell. They just make an attraction out of it. Okay, in all fairness, I really want to try that now. Uh, no, dude. Wine in itself is not my style. I'd much rather have like a brand and and Coke. Just a slush puppy mixed with vodka or something. Uh, I still remember that day that, you, <clears throat> that that my sister went over to your house and like you'd made Jello shots. <laughs> yeah. And you tossed a Jello shot at her, and she just sort of dodged out of the way. <laughs> You're talking about she even dodged, just, like deftly stepped. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, Sorry, you, you could get this uh, the type of milkshake thing like a Dom Pedro or a Dom Kalua. Kalula. Uh, Dom Kalua. <laughs> Sorry. Dom yeah. refers to stupid Kalua, which is interesting. That is yeah. actually pretty good, and it's also like slushy, but it's a milkshake. Mm. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you went to Mr. Pickwick's in Cape Town, like they it have alcoholic. Oh my God. What? I know, right? Uh, I've mentioned this before. Oh, you didn't. I did. Oh, God, my dreams are crushed. Okay, moving on. <laughs> There's no more reason to come back down to Cape Town. There is no more reason to come back to Cape Town. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, there isn't, but... <laughs> Fuck you! <laughs> Mr. Mr. Pickwick's was, like, the place to be. It, like, it had, like, homemade... Um, like, what's it? The patties that they had, like, uh. fucking made there, and... Oh no! I, I, I actually have a very good substitute. It doesn't have the same vibe, but it does. A, it's like a very good substitute. I'll take you there when we when you get down here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm, just down. I'm not sure if that was a good sound or a bad sound. No, that's a, a bad sound. Sounds. That's that's definitely uh -huh. a bad sound. Seeing <laughs> seeing that you just uh, you just talked about uh, like the Canadian fairs of chocolate colored ba uh, uh, covered bacon. I want to find sure. out, do they still have those apples with, like, the syrup? Caramel apples. Yes, I think that is it. Caramel yeah, apples. But yeah, but caramel have... apples is, like, staple. You know, I, yeah. last time I ate something like that, I was probably still in primary school. Yeah, we have that here as well. It's just not everywhere. Yeah, they do that here. Caramel apples or um, yeah. candy apples, where it's just pretty much just red candy on top of it. Yeah. Mm. I think we refer to them as toffee apples. Ah yes, that's yeah. the thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But we then have, you possibly I, I'd have say we have them both. Yeah. You possibly have. Because like we have. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> Tamaleki was was the thing that it was called. Remember, like that that syrupy thing that's so mm. difficult to get. Yeah, tamaleki. Um, it's it's so syrupy and so like sticky that they generally use it as a tough situation to get out of. Yeah. Like that's the, 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 the saying goes, Tamaleki or Yesena Tamaleki, which means mm. that you are in a tough situation at this point. Do, do you guys have beef jerky in, in Canada? Yes. Um yep. I actually yep. make my own. Oh we have better stuff. I promise. Well, we we can't necessarily say that until we've tried Cajuns. That's true. Uh, do you spice them? I do, yeah. I uh, I make a dry rub of my own seasoning and I uh I sort of rub all, like I shave the meat really thin because I have one of those big meat slicers. Shave it really thin, lay all the seasoning on it. I let it sort of season and marinate for uh, about a day and then I take it all out to the smoker and I smoke it for about a day. That's what she said. That's no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the only <clears throat> difference is, is apart from smoking it, Biltong is just dry it out. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. With fans and whatnot. It, it, yeah. Instead of smoking it, you literally just like put salt and some sort of, if you want some sort of dry rub, usually chili is quite yeah. popular, and then just like leave it. Yeah, but you also don't make it that thin. You, you, yeah. you, it, it, it has to be at, like solid pieces. Yeah, you leave the whole like fillet kind of thing hanging there. Just. It's very thick, yeah. Yeah. Mm, that's what she said? Oh, <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> but I mean, Cajun, like I mean, like the thing is, is that do you uh, is is the is the general preference of that side to have it like really, really, really dry, or um, do you actually prefer it to be a little bit wetter? This is, uh, this is a really, really strange conversation. <laughs> Very odd. In now is like, what the fuck? Is would people? would your jerky be more moist? <laughs> God, that's not even better. I prefer a good moist jerky. There is that. Is that, that? Yes. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, there, there is a, a battle. Little... <laughs> yeah. There is a battle of that here. Some people eat like dry bolton, and other people would eat like bolton that is actually still just for all meat. <laughs> I mean, it's the ah. same battle with our pup, man. I mean, like you either have caramel pup and uh, slop pup. Yeah, it's still yeah. so funny. I, I keep on trying to like not do the Casper de Fries thing where I'm where I'm talking about slop cock. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. But, what is uh, this exactly? Slu what? what? No, he is talking in Afrikaans. Yeah. Now, the thing is that, like, uh, there was there was this one stand-up skit from a guy here in 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 South Africa called uh, uh, Casper de Fries, and he was talking about the fact that, like, our word for pup or what do you call it? Meal? What is it? Uh, more like porridge. Porridge. Yeah. Now you can either get dry porridge or like, and the thing is, is that our porridge is like this this weird. It's it's not. Like breakfast cereal, it's not like you could actually have. Um, sometimes you, yes, you can have it for breakfast, but the thing is, is that we tend to eat it with our voice and our or our sausage and whatnot. And the thing is, is that like he was talking about like the Dutch and the fact that the word um, pup, which means you know that, uh, because yeah. of the word again. Uh, would refer to cock on that side, and then cock would be oh. here is a shit. <laughs> Um, Amazing, but, but on that side, it's actually pop. And so he was talking about like the the, the weird conversation that you could have. See, you, you cannot translate that and still believe that it will have the same impact. It's still, no, of course it doesn't. It, it, it never works in English. You can take that. You can take a, 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 another language stand-up comedy, and com and translate it completely. Nothing would make any sense. Yeah, it's well, a complete mess. Welcome to linguistics. Do you have any idea how difficult that is to like <laughs> give to my students? I have to sit there and go like, well, our it's book is complete. Of yeah, it's funny because of these reasons and because you know, ha 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 ha. And I'm kind of sitting there going like, I'm the only person smiling here because I'm the only person who understands. But th this is one thing that I actually enjoy uh, doing is I, I like stand-up comedians, but my t sense of humor is a little bit more to like the the more controversial comedy, and um, it's funny that. For example, United States comedy is international. I mean, freaking everybody can get the jokes, right? The same with uh, uh, some European people. But it's not like that everywhere. For example, what he's talking about is now this one guy that did uh, stand comedy even in another language. But it, it won't be funny for anybody else, right? Remember, okay, just, just on point and respect to that, I mean... Um What's his name? Has taken over an American te television show. Yeah, Trevor Noah. Uh, Trevor Noah. Oh yeah, but um, what I'm uh, what I'm thinking is is like, in, does Canadians have any of those traits that makes them a little bit what I used to call lost in translation? It's like uh, the rest of the world doesn't understand that type of culture, probably. Uh, yeah, I definitely say that there's a there's a few things. Um, I mean, a lot of it revolves around. <laughs> Dumb as it sounds, hockey, because <laughs> everybody loves hockey here. Uh, but we have a lot of. Um, I'm trying to think of some right now. It's like the, just random stuff that involves like weather. Like we call our uh, our uh, you co you probably call them beanies. They're hats. When it gets really cold, you wear a hat that covers your ears and covers your head. Mm -hmm. We call them yeah. toques. <laughs> it's a it's a, a what now? I know. Uh, it, uh, toque. Isn't, isn't that the one with like the flaps coming down the side? You can get them with the flaps. You get them without the flaps. Uh, but that's what we call them. So to us, it's like it's just normal. Like, oh, it's cold. You better put a toque on. And the, but if you go to the U.S., like I have a lot of friends in the U.S., and I'm like, oh, hey, do you guys have like a? Do you guys need a toque? It's cold. And they look at me like I just stopped speaking English. <laughs> a what? A toque? You know, like a. Holy like, crap! You guys get. And I can't describe it either. How do you describe it? <laughs> it's like the I'm, thing that you put over your head when it's cold. Yeah. <laughs> Goddamn beanie. All, all I'm saying is, is that like they they now have headphone beanies with headphones and headbands. Uh, oh yeah, 
This is I just I just posted a picture about this thing. It's Tuke's classic, Tuke's hats. <laughs> was it like a company that started it? It was named Tukes, and then like everybody just started calling them Tukes because they were the biggest. Uh, no reason. Um, How exactly? Like, yeah. What what is grits really? Is that like the bottom part of the pan that like is the like fat and the oil and everything else like that that they just pour onto something? Um. Yeah. So grits, right? Sorry, I mentioned in the chat there mm. grits because uh, you guys were talking about porridge earlier. Um, so, uh, what grits is, is, uh, you, you, uh, it's cornmeal, basically, but it's cornmeal that is an extremely high, um, uh, it's, it's, uh, it hasn't been ground very much, so it's very large pieces, and it usually is more of the husks rather than the inside part. It's millipop. Uh, so what they do is, uh, mm. okay. That's, uh, that's what... It's, could you give me some... Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's it's this link here what I'm looking at right now. It's it's basically exactly that. Mm. And they they uh, they actually make it savory, so they'll make it for dinner. They'll do shrimp and grits, that's, and they'll do sauce. That's us. Yeah, that's that's exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that's, wow. Same thing. Yep. Oh my God, we share things with Americans. Good Lord, kill us <laughs> all now. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. So I'm reading this right now. It says it's, it's uh, uh, in the United States. A dish is known as grits. Look at that. Uh, Wikipedia brings us all together. Uh huh. <laughs> And it, and it uh, takes away everything we love and thought was unique about our country. Fuck! <laughs> I think the closest thing we have to any of that in Canada that people actually eat, because grits are really hard to find, I actually enjoy them, but no one makes them, is uh, you guys said you had porridge. Uh, to us, porridge is uh, oat oatmeal. Yeah. And then we can also have this other stuff that I think everyone, every Canadian as a child had to eat, and no one liked it, and I don't think even their parents know why they fed it to us. It was called cream of wheat. Oh, and it was basically, that. yeah, it was basically slightly gritty flour that they mixed with hot water and then gave you in a bowl, and it was like eating liquid soup bread. And it sounds disgusting. like tapioca. No, it, it, it wasn't. It's not that. It wasn't even that thick, though. It was the consistency of maybe like, um, like wet ricotta cheese or cottage cheese or anything like that. That that reminds me of a cereal that we have. It does. Uh, What's it it's like a it's a health cereal, thank you. Tasty wheat, isn't it? Yes, no, 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 not tasty wheat. Uh, but yes, but definitely tasty no, wheat. Makes think, sounds like tasty wheat. Yeah, which is actually quite nice. But the thing is, is that Pro Neutro is definitely not the one because it wasn't actually like gritty at all. Um, Unless you pour too little, little milk. Malta Bella, yes, Malta Bella Pup. I could definitely uh, agree with with Kinkin ZA. He mentions Malta Bella Pup. That is definitely the kind of thing that, and it's actually very tasty if you pour a little bit of sugar. Yeah, it's just gross, man. Okay. Oh, like it's brown. Wait, yes. Okay, never mind. <laughs> no, no, it's, you know, they also get, like, I think we get flavored Mata Bella Pop around here as well. But uh, anything yeah. uh, anything in regards of comedy, I think that uh, that is where the topic started. Like, for example, if there's one thing that I cannot do is I cannot watch uh, uh, East Asia humor because I just don't get it at all. I I don't know what the hell is wrong with me. I just it's weirdly slapstick though. I know, but it's like it's not funny at all. Now this is something that I would just say is that lost in translation type of thing. Now mm -hmm. what I, what I'm thinking is is there anything like in Canada that is kind of like that? That something I know you 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 mentioned now uh, some of the foods the hockey. You, and you, the hats. you would you would probably make some hockey joke that we won't understand but it's it's Or, not it's not like everything you understand what i mean it, you do you do know that like the the because most of us are actually all english and the thing is is that like uh, it, uh, english in and of itself is is a culture in and of itself which means that most jokes that are made with the language itself just kind of they translate through anyway which is one of the reasons why we can watch both british comedy And American comedy, and get Canadian comedy, mm -hmm. because it's all in English, and they follow oh. the similar sort of cultural backgrounds. But I mean, like it's it's changing. It really is changing. Like if you look at linguistics, um, like the cultural perspective of English is literally changing country to country, uh, where they have their own words like toques, and we have pop, which we say in English, because it's sort of mm. uh, been. 
uh, agreed that this word is the thing that we need to use right now. <laughs> there's, there's, ma there's many things like that's been carried over into English from Afrikaans. Yeah. Among other I'd things. Be, I'd be a little bit uh, worried if I ever went down there and I was like, man, I'm really thirsty. I could go for a pop and they give me a plate of, you know, corn grits. Be like, oh. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I meant like a carbonated beverage with sugar in it. <laughs> Because that's yeah. what we call. If, if you mention soda. soda pop, then you that that would actually work. Yeah, yeah, that, but yeah. No, but no, nobody would actually. I can almost tell you, if you mention soda pop, people will know immediately that you're not from here. Yeah, because nobody talks like that. <laughs> well, I mean, Rathwin says that no one says pop, and the thing is that no one in South Africa says the word pop. And at no, the end of the no. day, we'd ask you whether you wanted a, a, a lollipop or not. Yeah, that that is what I would also say, especially the way you pronounce it. <laughs> yeah, that's pronunciation. I mean, it, it, if you if you in that pronunciation say like stop, like stop, oh, God, like, stop. It, it, it's the exact opposite. Stop, a, a stop is the Afrikaans word for walk. Walk. But, <laughs> but that that oh. US sort of nasally US pronunciation of stop <laughs> means the opposite of that. Yeah. Oh my goodness! And, <laughs> and even funnier is, is that, like in in South Africa, we tend to use what they call like a verklein word. What is what is it in English? A diminutive form. A di a, the the diminutive form. So essentially, because most people say "I can't for a stoppy" or "I'm going for a walk," essentially, if you translate that directly backwards, you go "I'm going for a walkie." <laughs> yeah, but who says "I'm going for a stoppy"? Who says that? Um, older people. Yeah. Around about like in their fifties, sixties, they would say, "I'm going for a hand out for a stoppy." Okay. Walkies. <laughs> but I, I <laughs> had it, and and uh, if you have a dog or something like that, if if you w w uh, walk them a lot, I'll, if you just mention the word "stop" because it's so aggressive, they go nuts. I know my dogs used to, because they just freaking love to walk. Hmm. Interesting. Sure. Yeah, but, but um, it's it's strange when you're talking about linguistics like that. It, yeah. it really is. I have to admit because there is this there is this little traits where somebody when they enter another country that it's kind of strange. Now I was uh, on a, a, a date last year, and I took this girl. Uh, she's never been on top of Table Mountain, and this is where I actually never told anybody this story. This is where something mm. got really funny. Um, uh, I took her to Table Mountain to, to have pictures and stuff up there and whatnot. But when I'm there at the booth to buy the tickets, I'm speaking to this person in our native language in Afrikaans, right? This person replies to me in Afrikaans, What country are you from? <laughs> and the only, reason that, the only reason she did that is because nobody local actually goes up there anymore. <laughs> She does, it's like indoctrinated in her head that she normally asks this question and then she knows, okay, this is the Germans, this is the, these people. Because when you're standing there in the queue, it's like you're in another country. <laughs> yeah. You're standing there and nobody visits our tourist destinations that actually lives here. <laughs> I go to Table Mountain often. Well, I used to. <clears throat> we even went to the zoo once in Pretoria. That Did was you also a bring, a, bring a date there? Is that... A popular place to bring girls or guys, whichever. <laughs> what are we talking about? Maybe. No, I just yeah. took it to Table Mountain. Our date was later that night. <clears throat> yeah, oh, I, I, well. I took my I took my date to the to the zoo, and then I left him in one of the cages. <laughs> <laughs> Is he still there? I think so. I kind of started him from there. To begin with. No, I'm joking. Actually, the funniest thing is is that we. Uh, we we'd gone that way, and um, we were looking at two cheetahs, and they were sort of very buddy buddy with things, and like um, like everybody else around us is going like, oh look at that couple, and the two of us look, and he looks at me, and he's like, they're both male, <laughs> and I look back at him, and I start canning myself because <laughs> like I was just sitting there going like, I don't even know how to respond to this, but these people are just going like, oh look at them, they're so cute together. It's like, yeah, cool, you guys have just literally said the exact... Because, I mean, like, Pretoria um, and generally a lot of the Gauteng region is is very, very anti-gay. Okay. And um, 
it's 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 very very difficult around here to sort of like do whatever you need to do. There is a couple of like exclusive clubs and whatnot up this side. Nothing like what it's down in Cape Town. Cape Town is like as gay friendly as it gets. Um, but. Yeah, I mean, like, it, so we were literally just sort of like canning to ourselves, going like, "Oh no, that's that's actually quite funny." <laughs> so they're like endorsing like a gay relationship of cheetahs. <laughs> well, it's like that. What was it? That zoo somewhere in the U.S. that had the uh, the two gay penguins, mm -hmm. and it was it was two male penguins, and they had you know formed a bond and they did their thing. Oh, and really? I guess a a lot of people. Uh, we're like, oh, it's such a cute couple, it's such a cute couple, and then the zoo was like, actually, you know, that's uh, it's, it's two male birds. They've just formed a, a bond because that happens, and like immediately, everyone started freaking out. Like it was all over the news. People <laughs> wanted them to take away. What did they want to kill? Just, <laughs> it was just like. Yeah, that people were like, why did you tell people it was a male and a female? Why couldn't we have just pretended it was a cute couple? And it's like we're just here, like again, up in Canada, like. What the hell is wrong with you guys? <laughs> it's two penguins. Come on, send them up here. Go ahead, send them up here. We'll take. We love gay penguins. That was, dude, that was the premise of an episode of uh, Parks and Rec. It was as well. That's right. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> so, um, so it's not, it's not sort of, dare I say, that far fetched in that it actually happened at one point. It actually did happen. Yeah. This was probably, uh, I want to say, it was like at least eight years ago or something like that. It was a while ago. Um, and there's like, I've heard people like complain. It's always in the U.S. It's always, always U.S. things. Um, I had some Actually, friends who lived in Tennessee. Yeah, I went to visit them, and they had a lion enclosure, and the lions. I guess the the male lions were getting you know cozy with each other a lot, and would be, you know, friendly. Because <laughs> I'm assuming when you have a cage of five or six male lions together, there's nothing else to do. Mm -hmm. So I guess a lot of people in Tennessee, where there was people protesting the 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 thing and saying like, oh, we don't want, you know, this couple split them up and put them in different cages and all this. And you're like, you serious? Like those poor lions have it bad enough. Now you want to take away their companionship? Wow, terrible people. A fox named after me at that zoo. I should point out. Occasion. <laughs> is, is that it? Yeah, there's a little, there's a little Cajun. Yeah. Aww. Um he yeah, when I was visiting my friend, they had one of the uh, one of my friend's other friends found a whole bunch of a litter of foxes, and the mother had been run over by a car. And the, this it's kind of sad, but the, the little kits were all sitting around her body on the side of the road, like pawing at her, and it was like pretty heartbreaking. So they brought him, tried to bring him to a vet, and they tried to bring him to a bunch of places, and everyone was like, "No, we won't take him. We won't take him. We won't take him." And finally, whatever zoo it was over in Tennessee was like, "Oh, we'll take him." They're like, well, what do you want to name them? So they named one Cajun, and they named one Miles, and they they named the two, I think, something generic, like something stupidly generic. Like, I think one is Vixen, actually. And I can't remember what the other one was called. Uh, but yeah, somewhere out there, presumably, there's still a fox in a zoo called Cajun. So. <laughs> in Tennessee. Well, so, cool. do you guys have, like... I uh, I know this is probably supposed to be more of you guys asking me questions, but yeah, it's what are those like? Do they have zoos there? Are they yeah, like many of them, or are they are they and really and popular? And less less zoos, more nature yeah, reserves. Yeah, zoos are not oh, okay. really the thing here. There are zoos, and in the zoos you'll find stuff that you don't get here, like tigers and <laughs> things like right, yeah. that. But uh, the nature reserves is actually. <clears throat> The bigger thing, we have the Kruger National Park, which is one of, I think it is the biggest nature reserve in the world, if I'm not mistaken. And, uh, well, no, it's not the biggest. Ivic, help me out here. W what are we talking about? Kruger National Park. It's one of the biggest one nature reserves. One of the reserves. biggest, yeah. It's, it's, it's big, it's, it's really big, it like covers, it's, it's pretty much almost the size of Gauteng. It's the size of an entire state. <laughs> and they, you drive and look at deer the whole time and maybe one day you'll spot a lion <laughs> but then the, the, you have to understand that the, these are this is a completely wild situation especially there that's why they they are still uh, uh, one of the most renowned nature reserves because the animals are wild they're not fed yeah so they they have to hunt for their food and stuff but people drive by <laughs> 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, like going back to one of Raquin's uh, things. I mean, when he talks about the CT Zoo, I'm hoping he's talking about the Tigerberg Zoo, uh, which, oddly enough, whenever you drove past it, like I always noticed that there were two bullet holes straight through the one sign. And yeah. I was just kind of sitting there going, like, oh, oh, well, that's probably the reason why they might have closed down. Yeah, that's the sign on the way to Stellenbosch, I think. Yeah, that's exactly the one. Um, uh, I remember my sister actually went through to that zoo at one point, and she was appalled. It was an absolute horror show of what could be a zoo. I mean, the 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 animals had like the smallest areas to roam around in, lo literally just cages everywhere. And then the person who was running the zoo was driving like a new Bucky uh, truck pickup. Pickup, yeah. And he he just bought it and everything like that and like these animals are living in this squalor of rusty cages and whatnot. And I was just sitting there going like, "What the hell?" Like when she told, I I almost cried when she was talking about it, and I was just sitting there going like, "How could you even?" Um, but yeah, I, you know what? On 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 that entire thing, I mean, we're also going to be talking about Cecil since he's something that we can all talk about. Or how does how do the Americans call him Cecil? Uh, I guess it depends regionally, right? Cecil or Cecil? And named after Cecil John Rhodes, I believe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Well, uh, one thing that captivity is always actually a big problem, but uh, there was this one in one type of captivity that I'm entirely against: the Sea World. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but there is obvious reasons for that, as you can't keep an animal of that size. <laughs> In a tank that small. Yeah, I was I was there during the times of the Shamu. I got I was in Splash Zone. Did you see Shamu? I saw Shamu. Wasn't Shamu the one that killed its owner? That 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 that. We're talking to you. Was that the answer? I'm yeah. Not sure if that was an answer. <laughs> that that's that's pretty much an answer. That's that's me going like I didn't know that, but okay. Yes, that one. <laughs> that was like play me off, Johnny, kind of thing. Yeah, play me out now. Bye bye. <laughs> and it's not even like a violent attack. It's you can see that the animal is stressed. Uh, uh, the the killer whale uh, just dragged her down and drowned her. Mm -hmm. Good for the whale, so long as it didn't oh. kill Shamu. But one thing that I notice is like the dolphins, for example, in, in those uh, tanks is apparently there's, uh, uh, usually they would, they live very sh short lives in the tanks because of the sound of the pool pumps. Yeah. And it's, uh, oh, yeah. they're very sensitive they, to the they, sound. They, they, I can imagine that they try to commit suicide after a while. Yeah, and th that's what happens is they actually drown themselves deliberately. Yeah, they get stressed out, the constant noise, yeah. I, I mean, I heard, that before. What? I actually heard something similar, a story like that, um, about someone who owned a pet rabbit, but the thing was so, like, absolutely hostile and bonkers, and they would, like, constantly try to bite people, and uh, was always jittery, wouldn't let anyone near it, and eventually, I don't know exactly like, how it died, it eventually passed, but they realized that they had... Uh, the house that they were living in had one of those um, high-frequency rodent oh, repellents. No, that was driving the thing insane. So it just—it was just sort of reacting to the stressful situation of this constant high-pitched noise. Look, I mean, it, that, oh, that, it's, it's, that that really just reminds me of uh, Happy Feet, and I mean, like that that period where they're in the enclosed areas, and I'm just kind of sitting there going, like, God, no, don't, 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 don't. I literally like I I um I probably cried for about ten minutes because of that entire scene, and I never could watch Happy Feet ever again. Which scene is that? Watched. It's where they're stuck in the zoo. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, near the uh, near the end. Um. Yeah. No. But uh, the thing is, is with animal in captivity, it depends on what type of captivity we're talking about. Some places are actually pretty well looked after. It's just like I said, sea world, you cannot keep killer whales in a tank unless your tank is the size of an ocean. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it, it, it depends. You get some, uh, like the nature reserves and whatnot, they're really, they're, well not everyone, but many of them are really well looked after. But yeah, so, yeah. I don't know, do you guys have like those type of nature reserves in, in Canada? I know there's bears, that's all that I know. 
Canada is bears. Yeah. <laughs> we uh, what about nowadays. The yeah, nowadays more and more uh, people are getting away from the sort of uh, we'll say the traditional or the old style zoo where it was metal bars and cages and stuff, and they're trying to get into more of the like. Uh, we have nature reserves for. You know, bears and caribous. We have a lot of national parks and stuff like that. As far as like, as, as, far as, as far as like animals in Canada, there's not really too many that people are like, oh, I really want to go see a moose. It's like, oh yeah, I guess there's a moose <laughs> there. No, I, I really want to like see bears. a moose. A I don't want to see a moose. They're huge. We have, we have. They are actually. We've, we on the way up to Feral, or when we drive up to Feral, there's a small road that we travel on. It's a little one-lane dirt road. It's uh, you could travel on it for about 20 minutes. And it just winds all through the woods. It's it's right out of a horror movie. Um, it's like that type of camp, like a, a cabin in the woods <laughs> that you go to. Exactly. Um, okay, well, if you've ever seen the movie Evil Dead, the path that they take oh. to get to the cabin reminds me of the road to get to Camp Farrow. Oh, and uh, my, and it, including, oh. you have to drive over three very old, very rickety bridges that you can only fit a single car across. And at any point in time, every time we pass it, we're always thinking, oh, God, we're going to die. We're going to fall off into the water and die. But we, we always make it. And if you take the bus to Camp Farrell, um, the, there's a school bus that actually, two school buses will drive across these bridges. And everyone behind them is just like, I don't know how the bridge didn't just collapse. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, uh, apparently you guys are very good at, uh, at you know, wood engineering. <laughs> I would <hope> so. <laughs> Someone is. That's all I know. Uh, but nice. on that trail, occasionally you do see moose, and they're the like. I drive a little Nissan Versa, and the moose could easily have just been like, "Oh, hey, nice car," and flipped me over. Like they're <laughs> they're gigantic. They weigh more than my car. So <laughs> we see them on the road. We're just like, "Well, I guess we're gonna stop here for a bit and see what this moose is gonna do." <laughs> Totem is making some very, very interesting comments at this point. She was talking about the, you know, the Evil Dead, and I love the Evil Dead series. As, as B-movie as it is, it was like the literal definition of what you can do with camera angles. But yeah, tree rape, and of course, I'm a lumberjack and I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, I'm just... So there's bears around the area and shit that you guys go to... Uh, when you're doing this camp feral. Well, you know what? I'm, I'm pretty sure that there's a large amount of bear clubs around as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's been said, yes, there are a lot of bears at feral. <laughs> 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 uh, but as far as actual bear bears, um, I think it's only, included. It's, only, yeah, it's only been once or twice that an actual animal bear has been spotted there. And it's usually across the river. And the reason is, uh, in real, real life, bears are very, very timid creatures. And the feral is making so much noise. Yeah, they went that really the bears, near the way. Mm. They're not going anywhere near there. I mean, there's people yelling. There's people partying. There's a guy named Fuzzy, Falk, or Fuzzy Bunny who just won't shut up. And he'll be making a meowing sound from day till night. <laughs> He's a good guy. I really want to go uh, to this camp. More reason for a grizzly to actually go there and say, what's up? Hey, uh, Kitty, yeah. come here. I have a present uh, for you in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> no grizzlies. Uh, there, are, there are no grizzly bears up there. Black, I think it's uh, black bears. Or black browns? Bears. Might get brown bears. Brown bears and black bears, but definitely no grizzly bears. The big, huge ones. Mm. I hope. <laughs> have you ever seen a wolf that side at all? I've never seen a wolf at Feral, but I have seen wolves before. Uh, okay. There's a lot of coyotes that actually live behind my house. Yeah. There was that sad story recently about like uh, a wolf being mistaken for a coyote, and uh, the guy like shot him. Yeah, that's a. It's a bit of a problem that people are having here. Is that people seem to believe that killing coyotes is a good idea, yeah, and they, they are still protected. And what's happening is people are mistaking wolves for coyotes, and they're killing wolves. And what happens is. There's a lot of people with really small dogs, and small dogs are yappy and bark, and as soon as a coyote goes by, the coyote sees the dog barking, challenging it, so the coyote will go and kill the dog, and then there will be the, like, the neighborhood will go out with crossbows and probably guns and stuff and go and kill all of the coyotes nearby. Forks and <laughs> because someone, someone's little, like, you know, tiny dog got eaten, and... It sucks, Pomeranian, like time, seriously, yeah, I wouldn't defend Pomeranian. a Pomeranian. 
and what, what ended up happening recently was they went out and killed basically a wolf pack, and it was a wolf pack. It wasn't a coyote pack, and they had nothing to do with the attacks. It was just a, uh, a mistaken thing, but people don't know, right? They see wolf-shaped dog thing, and they assume coyote. And so. mm, that's horrifying. Yeah, and I mean, they're so very endangered here, the wolves. Yeah. They're very endangered. No, I mean, like, and that's, that's, that's the stupid thing. I mean, it's their land first. We're just borrowing it for as long as we're still alive. Mm -hmm. Are there a lot of hunters around that area, though? Yep. Uh, deer hunters, uh, turkey hunters, a lot of wild turkey around where I live. Always crossing the roads. I'm always um, thinking like uh, the, the, like this weird story of a fur shooter, <laughs> because I've seen <laughs> some <laughs> fur and loathing in Los Angeles. No, really? shut up. Uh, no, talking because about CSI. I, 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 no, he's talking about CSI. No, I saw a, 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 a two suits once that both look remarkably accurate, like polar bears, right? Except they're smaller because a polar bear is much bigger than a human being. I'm kind of thinking, like, uh, let's a hunter actually see something like that. And they're like, they first don't think, okay, well, polar bears aren't really around here, but... I'm, 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 <laughs> <in> Los Angeles. <laughs> I'm, kind of, I'm, I'm kind of thinking this whole freaking thing through. You know? I, I was considering, what if, what if a first suit got shot like that? <laughs> that would make news. Oh, oh I'm sure yeah. it would, I'm sure. I mean, it's, it's mistaken identity, apparently. <laughs> But I mean, we if, if you're talking about, about that kind of first suitor, it's the, point it's, it's the one bouncer, um, the bouncer wolf from the uh, a 366 movie. Or, I don't know. Yeah, there's a bouncer bear there. He he looks remarkably like uh, a polar bear crossing his arms a lot of the time. Okay. We were actually talking about news coverage and uh, and furries the other day with. Uh, Everybody, I'm sure, remembers the chlorine incident at MFF. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. And how I get a feeling if somebody actually did get shot, you know, in a fursuit, that it, it would be not handled very well either, where there was the whole newscaster cracking up and having to run uh, off, uh, yeah. off screen. And it's like, you know, people actually were injured. Like, this is a serious thing. And she's just like, oh, my God, look at their suits. Yeah, did you, did you guys, some did you guys well, see that? In, in all fairness, really. they're all very, very cute and all very, very fluffy. Like, I would start laughing, too. Did we, because uh, they're, they're yeah. so cute and so fluffy and out in the streets <laughs> because some idiot decided to leave a chlorine bomb somewhere. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, we were, we were there. I was there at that. So I was out in the cold. Um, <laughs> during that event, you didn't have a fur suit, did you? No, I. Uh, they all cuddled being, with the fur suit. Yeah, were does. you being cuddled with 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 somebody like you know? What? No, well, let's see. What what is the age rating of this? Uh, <laughs> this <laughs> it's, it's, it's fair enough. Let's go. Okay. All right. So I was bartending a party, mm -hmm. and uh, and I was wearing tight leather pants, and I was wearing a leather harness around my chest, <laughs> and nothing else. <laughs> And then the alarm went off, and thankfully I had shoes nearby and a shirt, but some of the people that were in that party with me didn't. Why didn't and you wear shoes a behind a bar, dude? Uh, well, I had shoes. Like I said, I had shoes, so it was fine. Uh -huh. But a lot of people that were at the party did not. Were they so, wearing anything else? Uh, some of them were wearing spandex <laughs> and uh, <laughs> things of that nature. <laughs> a little more risque-type <laughs> outfits, and uh, then, you know... Wait, we hold figured on. we'd this be out there for five, ten minutes. Wasn't... I, I have a feeling... This was that leather party, right? It is, yeah, it was, yeah. That was... Yes. Um, we actually had a... We had a, we had a talk to uh, Dalmi. And was Dalmi was actually talking about the fact that he was at a leather party during this entire fiasco. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> he was there as well. Yeah. Huh. Oh, Okay. Well, well, there. If you, you ask him, does he remember? Does he remember the bartender? That was me. I was the bartender. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, I was the male bartender. So, okay. there was two of us. I, I would love to say a whole bunch of things right now, but I'm going to leave that for yeah, yeah, for private chat with you at no, some point. No. <laughs> no. Oh no. Okay, that's fine. Leave it for private, private chat. chat. I'm not editing any videos. <laughs> 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 never do. <laughs> <clears throat> Moving on. <laughs> yeah, but, but that is something that 
I cannot uh, the, the the newscaster running out thing. I know it's serious and whatnot, but I mean it's the first time she probably saw this, Look, right? At least she didn't stay there and laugh. And and then she True. she yeah. just chuckled and she couldn't stop laughing and she ran out, right? It's not mm -hmm. that. Bad, <laughs> but a lot of a lot of people go a lot of people go completely haywire when they see something like that. Oh <laughs> shit! Fuck no! She hates freaking furries, and I don't know what the hell else. I'm like, dude, that is a, that is a normal reaction to something as comical as this. You're you're gonna get that if you can't handle it. They're... Rather don't yeah, furry. Get get out <laughs> Stand up for it. Make it even funnier. Could anybody hear that? I think there was a fur who was making comment on one of the. I think scratch. Cajun. I didn't even notice until that. Okay, point. that that is way better. I can hear you guys again. Nope. Gone. Now it's only me again. Hello, yes, that's better. I think you're running the call. That's probably your network again. Yeah, I'm I'm terribly sorry about that. Uh it just sort of died out on its own. Um, it does yeah, just awesome. slowly you turned into a robot. Button. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. That's this is <laughs> welcome to the South Africa podcast, where Ivic generally turns into a robot every fifteen seconds. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that happens more often than we care to admit. Yeah, well, actually, there was that one day that we actually cancelled the call. Because. Yeah, but yeah. Um, anyway, as I was saying, what was I talking about? We don't know. We just heard. Uh, 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 uh. What was I talking about? <clears throat> about the whole chlorine attack and people laughing about not knowing the very random. Oh stuff. yes, okay. So there was a guy on Google Plus who uh, was talking about the entire idea that if you're part of a fandom, are you allowed to lampoon or satire it? Um, of course. And I would say yes. Okay. The thing is, is that like obviously it was like a ninety-something percent thing to uh, etc. You just get these audio settings right. No, I've got everything. Speakers are high. Uh, yeah, I see. It's YouTube. this stuff here. Let me just have a look here. Okay. It always does this when yeah. you re-establish a connection that it Sorry. smashes up the audio settings. And I like. I mean, one of the things that I actually mentioned is is that you know what? If you can't laugh at your own sort of fandom or culture or whatever, or whatever, you're gonna have a bad time. I mean, yeah. even uh, who's who's the guy <laughs> who said that first? Uh, scratch you and I. Was it the guy in South Park? No, it wasn't him. Um, it was. It's that really angry guy about. Peter Griffin. No, he was. He was talking about like a candy corn. Oh, um, Lewis Black. Black. Lewis Black. Lewis Black. That was yeah. It. Lewis Black was talking about the um, uh, about the entire thing about like you know what if you can't make fun of what you belong to then you're absolutely one hundred and ten percent fucked. So one of the reasons why, you know, um man now I can't remember his name again. Uh our guy, the guy who's on like an American T V show now. Trevor Noah. Trevor Noah. It's one of the reasons why Trevor Noah is so well followed. It's actually an interesting thing, is is that I said that if um I was talking to a a, a majority uh black student class and I was like, you know, you're looking at Musi Maimane, and <clears throat> would they support him? And the, the answer was generally no, because his accent is too English for his own good. And I said that, like, you know what, if, if uh, Trevor Noah supported him, would you support him then? And they were like, yeah. Hmm. Hmm. So I mean, that's, that's an interesting thing. I mean, like, accent also means a large amount of things down here. But like I said, if you can't make fun of, of your culture, if you can't make fun of things that happen in your culture, because frankly, you know what, a lot of the time it is kind of funny. I mean, I mean like, just, just the entire idea. And I mean, even, um, what's it, even uh, Two Griffin had, like, that part about, um, uh, what's it? <sighs> 
Let me just see. I, I actually, I've, uh, give me a second. Give me like two seconds. But two Griffin had this thing where he was talking about the fact that, you know what, like only at a furry place would you be able to like say, you know what, um, my dolphin um, is having trouble getting it up. No, it was my dolphin lost his nipple ring. Yeah, hey, my dolphin <laughs> lost his nipple ring. <laughs> And I mean, like, the thing is that it's only in the furry community that you can do that. And you're kind of sitting there going, like, oh, my God, that it is very, very funny. Because the thing is, is that, like, because we say shit like this. I mean, like, you come up to a person, you say, no, I am a pink cat rabbit. You're a what now? Like, seriously. Like, I mean, at the end of the day, if I go, I am a green and white and black fox wolf. I'm a pink cat rabbit. Uh, we're not we're not talking of anybody that we know inside the fandom here. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Look, I'm just thinking that I mean like and I mean I've seen some rainbow furs these days and it like you know, I'm I'm a rainbow husky or uh a purple oh, dinosaur which isn't actually related <clears throat> anything to like Barney at all. <laughs> I mean, like sparkle dogs. Sparkle dogs. Sparkle dogs. That's but the word. Like that's that's exactly the thing. I mean, red and black, red, black and white, yot. Tell me that this doesn't seem like completely and utterly inane and insane from anybody else's perspective. I actually of just. you're gonna laugh about it. I actually just call the sparkle dog a person that decided to look like Rainbow Dash's vomit. <laughs> You mean the the stuff that comes out of Rainbow Dash's, Dash's ass? Because like we all know that she has like a little trail of rainbows coming up behind them. But uh, yeah, it's the, the part you don't hear is like, like kind of a dog. It's is a, that the part that you don't hear? Yeah. It's a sparkle dog is uh, in my consideration not a two tone or three tone color. It's a person that tried to look like every single color that exists. Well, if you can paint with all the colors mm. of the wind, then why not? Yeah, and you, yeah. It's it's a, it just doesn't yeah. fit together, dude. Like yellow and green and blue, and th th you, those colors just don't fit. Cajun, you're a normal red fox, right? Yeah, I feel bad that I am now. Like maybe I should <laughs> add like a rainbow tail, or maybe like three extra arms and tentacles coming out behind my ears because yeah. now I feel all self-conscious that I chose the word thing ever. <laughs> make, it, make yourself a red, 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 red fox. <laughs> like I did. <laughs> Extremely Thank red. Great red. So red it hurts the eyes. That, well, I mean, that's, that's exactly what um, Anpu's um, second Frank. life character looks like. <laughs> <laughs> and my... Oh, great. So I'd be copying him. Oh. Yeah. And my... No, you see... The head. And I think Freddy, some people uh, make Frank. characters for fun. Mm -hmm. And some people make characters that purposely are intended to piss off artists who have to draw them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair enough. I mean, like, Scratch is blue, I'm green, um, Anpu's black, <coughs> as, as white as he is. But yeah, I mean, yeah, it's an odd color, but I wouldn't consider that Sparkle Dog's material. Look, I mean, at the end of the day, again, like, I mean, like, we've, we've had far worse, I guess, color choices, and frankly, just look at Pokemon. Yeah. I mean, like, they're the kind of colors that you get out of... Imagine you get a sparkly, like, you know, freaking Growlithe, and it's blue. What the fuck? Who cares? No, but I mean... <laughs> it, it, it just gets weird when, it, when basically it ends up looking like a fire in a Crayola factory. <laughs> so... Holy shit! Okay, cool. That's my color now, and that's the backstory. Somebody too. has just ran through an explosion in a in a in a color dye like factory, and they just come out all splattered and be like, "This is how I was born." Oh, no, 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 no. no. They, they went, I woke up like they they went into a Diwali factory. <laughs> oh, it's, okay. it's like, like that first tie dyed. It's like that first suit that you posted, Ivik, the one that is themed after the Smiler roller coaster in Alton Towers. Yeah, but that's that, an epic fursuit. suit. That is crazy, eh? The thing has a speaker in it. Yeah, it actually plays music. You should hear it. Uh, you should check the YouTube videos. It actually plays music when this person walks around. <laughs> uh, so when he stands suit. still, it stops. No, no, no. It's it, 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 
Uh, it's button. It's a, it's a girl underneath it, by the way. I found the profile. Let me post this picture. Somebody just linked a. Uh, yeah. Somebody yeah. just linked a picture of a of a fur suit with a fleur de lis on the back. Oh, what oh my goodness me, that is cute as all hell. <clears throat> let me see. Let me yeah. see. I want to take it home now. Uh, what what is this? Uh, Spectre. Which one? Uh, 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 Spectre. Schechter. Schechter. Uh, just flew the what now? Oh, flew the lead. That's what I think. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I could I, look. I mean, just 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 imagine. Like, I mean, we have Nazi furs. We have, you know, um, what else do we have? What, when it when it comes to like social like social sort of groups that we like small groups that we belong to, we have Nazi furs. We have Nazi furs is kind of like an extension of a thing that exists called mo furs. <laughs> Mo furs, <laughs> <laughs> military yes. furs, but that's yeah, actually the abbreviation nil. for it. Yeah. Just, just call it mil military furs, because at the end of the day, when you say mil furs, I'm just going like everyone. Yeah, go. no, 45 no. years old soccer moms. Yes, <laughs> I, see that. That's that's great. It's, I like when they get called mil furs because then they get upset about it. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> like no, it's, it's military furs. Oh, sorry, my bad. I. I'm in the wrong club. I need to leave. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry. You carry a gun in that package somewhere? Is it in your leg? Wow, that thing's long. Okay, I'm leaving now. <laughs> well, just, that, just imagine. Uh, just, night, just, just imagine the idea of like um, a furry dressed in like a KKK outfit, <laughs> like his nose hanging out the like area with these like eye holes, <laughs> like completely and utterly destroying his vision even further. Oh, it would be amazing. I would sit there and I like, just stand and laugh <laughs> for a that very be, long time. That must be a little bit funny, at least. <coughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, but the whole military thing, I think it it has its foundation in the the, uh, the video gaming culture and whatnot as well. Is it really? Or, the, you know, or just gun fanaticism, I suppose. Yeah. Look, I mean, welcome to America when it comes to that kind of stuff. <laughs> right to, uh, something about right to bear arms. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm loving this. <laughs> but, 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 but what what other uh, Cajun? What other type of like trains inside the free fandom have you seen that's kind of like the military thing? Like groups inside, uh, yeah. Uh, there's the military fur. I've seen, I've seen, do you mean like like I've seen the Catholic, like the Christian furs? <laughs> um, they're kind yeah, of a big group. Yeah, and that's uh, another interesting. Would thing. you consider steampunk furs <laughs> as a type of group inside the fandom? The same as like the military furs? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, probably less serious. Well, hmm, a little less serious, but definitely. Um, I know a lot of people who did a lot of steampunk stuff back when it was really popular. Huh. Uh, I would also say anime. There's a huge, huge number of people who like anime here in Ontario, and it's pretty much split 50-50. You go t to a fur con, and if someone says, hey, have you seen this anime? There's a like, good chance they'll be like, oh, yeah, it's my favorite. I love it. Or it's going to be like that type of thing. You go to a furry convention, and you wind up at an anime convention. Like a and you're like, weird. where am I? <laughs> There's there's actually a furry yeah, exactly. that there there is actually a furry that um that has an Attack on Titan jacket that's sort of incorporated with his suit, and again like Attack on Titan dudes, watch it please. I haven't watched Attack on Titan. You need to watch Attack on Titan. I'm not an anime person. You need to watch Attack on Titan. <laughs> But that's so that's the one thing that they never that uh, I've never seen any statistics of. Normally they they they, they like uh, the surveys and what separated us perfectly in our species, right? Like jackals and foxes and this and that. And that. But instead of like going for like this military things, steampunk things, anime, etc., etc., and you get a lot of other things as well, like futuristic furs. Mm. Uh, hmm. People that put a speaker in their fursuit. Yeah. Oh, 
Uh, Look, I mean, in all fairness, sorry, I, I, saw, I saw one of the most amazing fursuits, like, recently. Um, it had these LED lights that would only proc when it's really, really dark. A proc. Like, like <laughs> literally, like, the, 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 the light goes away and suddenly you see these LEDs just light up on his back. Oh, God, that was sexy. I saw it. It was amazing. I just found a word that you use the term proc. Yes, I know. I'm sorry. It's the only word that is actually relevant at this point. I know, I know. It's just like outside. <laughs> I've never really heard anyone use it outside like, wow. Well, the thing is, is that at the end of the day, it, it, it's useful because like, the thing is, is that they do get procced. I know. Um, sorry. Uh, in case you sort of under your breath mentioned you hate something, do share. <laughs> I think it was in regards of the I'm speaker. Sorry, uh, what was that? I couldn't hear you. Speaker in the fursuit. I think it oh, was. Yeah, yeah. You you sort of muttered something into the mic about hating something we were discussing. <laughs> uh, I uh, I don't like the uh, the squeakers. The mm. oh uh, yes, that have the squeakers. Um, Look, I mean, in all fairness, that's it. Now everybody is going to kill you because most of the people you probably fell in love with telephone. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, she's not a squeaker in the in the sense of like the squeakers that we know. She's a she's the better type of squeaker. At this point, she, like, I mean, even Two Griffin has mentioned that squeakers kind of annoy him as well. And mm. but I mean, just I mean, imagine well, for me, like, it's it's. If, sorry, carry on. I was just gonna say it's it's not. I will will say it's not everybody, but it's the ones that just sit there and squeak constantly and squeak, 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 and they try to sort of talk using the squeaker. And at that point, I'm just like, why don't you just talk? Like instead of putting <laughs> the squeaker in your mouth. And mouth the squeaking sound. Why don't you just say something? <laughs> say know. something. I'm yeah, giving true. up on you. Squeak. Fucking hell! But the stories, <laughs> their thing. That's probably the reason why. <laughs> I mean, like, uh, what's it? If if I think about it, like, just imagine like a fur suit covered in nothing but squeakers. So like, it walks, it squeaks. Like you shake its hand, it squeaks. You give it a hug, it makes a massive squeak. <laughs> 10,000 squeaks at once and you're just sitting there going like, oh my god, what did I do? Why are you here? <laughs> no, no, really, there is like sort of very little way to get anything out of them and trying to communicate with them properly. Actually, you know what, that's, that's an interesting point. I mean, I, I saw what's, we, we've all seen that one video where they did like a news uh, broadcast inside a furry convention and everything like that and a lot of the furs didn't actually want to talk to the um, to the newscasters. Yes, they normally don't. They normally run away. If you're smart, you run away. Yeah, I know it's a fair point, but the thing is, is that mm -hmm. like, I mean, they didn't. They, they, none of them wanted to communicate. They only communicated in like, which, which to a large extent, kind of doesn't necessarily make it any better, because like you're sitting there and like a newscaster comes up to you with like a, a microphone and like goes, "So, what do you think about this convention?" You go, "Growl." Rawr. <laughs> oh, I like it, turtles. Woof, woof. Or I like, like turtles, yeah. Just, you're just, kind of sitting there going, the content. you know, wow. If a newscast ever comes to you, even if it's in your work or something completely unrelated to the fandom or whatnot, right? If you're not good at talking, act dumb. But you don't go woof, woof. <laughs> no, 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 that, that's for a furry convention. That makes perfect sense then. It does, but in that same sense, it doesn't necessarily, like, shed any light as to... No, like, it makes perfect sense. Just go... Uh, uh, uh. No, rather don't shed any light as opposed to shedding the wrong light. Yeah, but they, they're not going to use that. They, they don't want that type of sound bite. They want people talking when they, answer, when they ask questions. Think about it. If yeah. That's, yeah. Their, that's their time that they have <laughs> for their show. Yeah. So if you're going to go like completely haywire and nuts and start barking <laughs> instead of saying like anything... Yeah. yeah, that probably unless it will be funny. It's it, look, it's it's funny, but the thing is, is that it's not the right kind of funny. It's it's the kind of funny that makes people go, mm, "Those guys are weird." <laughs> well, uh, um, dude, you don't have to fucking look that far to say, "Oh, those guys are weird." When you're talking about the free fandom. <laughs> <laughs> I guess at that point, it's like it's like, "Oh, that guy's weird." Uh, it's, you, you're telling me this wearing ears, tail, and um, a collar being dragged by this guy. You're saying he's weird because he's barking? You're all weird. It's just like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, we are. I mean, we all are. You look, I mean, look at the end of the that, day, like, like, those guys are extremely weird, though. <laughs> the the, the yeah. SM, like, I think that they should do more, um, you know, broadcast in the SM like, cultures because, frankly, like, if you want to know where a lot of the stuff that some of the people come up with, it's from there. 
It really is from there. And it's one of the things that I've defended on like several, several occasions. And I've said, look, you want to look at some of the weirdest sexual fantasies ever? Go to anime. Go to like the S&M clubs anywhere. Go to like, you know, um, mm -hmm. open, uh, open relationship bars and shit like that. Go to those places because goodness knows the only reason why they <laughs> exist is because of them. I mean, <laughs> and then you blame it on us. I think the only thing that's, that's weird is that, yeah, is, is that furries wear it on our sleeve as opposed to those clubs where it's all shuttered doors and kind of things. Nobody knows what goes on in those clubs until you go in and you're like, oh, oh, okay, this is pretty good. Uh, ra 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 a no, go. Sorry, I'm just answering Raccoon's question here. It's not that people are scared of talking to the media. It's that I would rather prefer somebody that knows how to talk to the media to talk to the media. No, you're fair. <clears throat> but I mean, like, mm -hmm. think about this, right? Um, uh, there's a there. There was a bar in in Centurion called um, uh, Rock Shack. Uh, Anpu knows it quite well. Rock Shack. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But the thing is, is that now Rock Shack, and I spoke to the owner, and I was like, there was one point that I was like, look, what would you say if there were a whole bunch of people doing kind of strange things in um, in, in in your club? And he's like. Meh, not much. I have like an S and M club here, like every first Tuesday of the week of of the month, <laughs> and they like they they close out the bar and they come here and they're in leashes and they're in harnesses and they're doing very very strange things to one another. And I only allow other people who are like them in here. And I was kind of sitting there going like, "Cool, that works. Great, we'll do that." <laughs> yeah, it makes sense. Well, the last thing you want to do is create a safe, you know, safe environment for people, and then have some, well, some basically jackass come in like, "You guys are weird. This is not right." I don't know why he has like an American accent, but that's the guy I chose. <laughs> it's, it's good. Like, I mean, the American accent fits. <laughs> well, Texan well, man coming you in. You boys America. look like them queers. Like, oh, thanks. Yeah. Yeah, great. Y'all yeah, exactly. know what comes from Texas, right? <laughs> yeah. It, it would, it would, it would, yeah, in exactly. my mind, it would either be like some intoler intolerant dick or like an absolute dude, bro. Those are the two people who... Oh, yeah. No, I mean, in, in, in South Africa, the accent would be more like, Yes, like it, bro. What the hell are you doing? I oh, honey on. Not really. I mean, if you consider the weird shit that they listen to, like fucking the Antwerp or whatnot, I don't even know what the hell is worse. Or stranger. You like, don't mention that, that, that one, the Antwerp. Uh, video with um, what's it, Pitbull? Is this such a big thing in Canada as well? The Antwerp. Um, you're gonna have to describe what that is. It's like this crazy <laughs> South African band that hit it hard in the United States. They were in. Um, they were featured Chappie. in Chappie. In the movie Chappie, yes. Oh, oh, and, uh, <clears throat> with, yeah. What? How do you spell that? A N T W. Okay, yeah, I can see. Okay. Die, die, Antwerp. Die, Antwerp. <laughs> die, Antwerp. Die, Antwerp. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's definitely not as popular here as, um, as I'll say maybe the U.S. is. Um, Thank God. Yeah, I don't like honestly like that's. I, I'm looking up right now, trying to see if there's any songs I recognize. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, this one. I guess. Which one was no, that? It's not very popular here at all. Uh, I don't know. I just clicked on a random YouTube link. <laughs> Look, yeah. I mean, granted, like, I mean, we, we talk about the Antwerp here, but I mean, um, you know, Canada has Justin Bieber. U Ugly Boy? I think it's called Ugly Boy. Oh, yeah. Canada, yeah. Canada's, look, Canada, look, I mean, as much as you've sort of said, like, you know what, stay in America, we don't give a shit about you, but I mean, you guys do happen to have birthed uh, Justin Bieber. <laughs> and we Alanis Morissette. Uh, look, Alanis Morissette's good. <laughs> Shut up. And Celine Dion. <laughs> hey, we've Celine Dion is good. Shut up. I think yeah, we. I, I think Planet we have all the good. We have. There's a lot of good and bad that came out. Yeah, got, I remember uh, they yeah, got yeah, Dave Mouse. Yeah, that's so true. Dave Mouse is also Canadian. Well, I mean, above and beyond that. Yeah. Oh, you know what? Freaking. I've met Dead Mouse. I met him at a party in Toronto a long what? time ago. What? Jules Zimmerman? Are you freaking uh, serious? Yeah, it was at a huge, huge party, and he was just there doing stuff. Like, I didn't walk up and be like, hey, how's it going? It was just like, 
hey, remember that party we were at? Apparently that guy there was Dead Mouse. I was like, oh, cool, all right. And <laughs> yeah. then he got really popular. And and then you um, carry on with your life. But I carried on with my life. Mm. Like Golden Have you ever met Townsend? I know that Potteroo mentioned that he like worked with Devin Townsend's drummer or his guitarist or something like that. Um, no, that would be something more Potteroo did. Yeah, but I mean, Devin Townsend is like my metal hero at this point. Mm. Yeah, it's amazing. Do you, do you apologize when you meet well, a, when you meet a celebrity? <laughs> do you apologize when you meet a, meet a celebrity? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if I don't recognize them. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> like, I mean, like, who who would recognize Dead Mouse without his head? I would. Anybody would. The dude is so freaking uh, over it's... fucking the Rolling Stone. He was like one of the big hit EDM producers at a time. <laughs> <His mother. laughs> he's very he's very generic. Like as a person, he's he's a, a very generic looking. Like he just looks like a regular. Like yeah. kind of thin, like I'd say, like a skate skater punk, right? He just looks yeah. like a, any regular guy. It's it's not uh, like Steve so Palo seeing him in like, a room like identify from space. Yeah, like if he were in a room with all those same people again, I'd be like, I don't know, uh, it's that guy. Like, is he wearing his big head? No, I don't know who it is. He has a lot of tattoos. Well. I'm gonna post you guys. Uh, an I was old, gonna say an old picture. It's true. He has a lot of tattoos. Uh, I'm gonna post you guys an old picture of. Uh, um, and to tell me if that is generic. <clears throat> Here it comes. Is that the one with the Pikachu backpack? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Wait for it. Are, are there so Here few pictures of him outside in the media without his head on that? Like, no, there's, there's a ton. But, oh, there's like, a lot. But no. no. no he, he's not like Recently, that. didn't he? He had that really nice car, and he had to take the pink wrap off. Because yeah. he oh, yeah. made it look like Hello Kitty. Yeah, because uh, Ferrari nailed him for it. Because he called yeah. it the Ferrari. There's nothing yeah. better than the Ferrari. Yeah, it was it was that the was Yonka great. themed one. Is that generic? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, generic for the nineties. <laughs> he just like he just looks like a, as bad as it sounds. Like he just kind of looks like a regular, you know, like punk. Yeah, he just looks, looks like, like a, a regular punk. kid. You're right. He looks like he comes directly out of Green Day from 1991. Ah. I know another furry. That, I know another furry in the FAF Mark Shots thread that posted a picture, and he also looked like that. And he even states that I was going to a rave. Nah. <laughs> Fucking yeah. spiky hair, weird rave glasses, and everything. <laughs> hey, I went to a lot of raves in Toronto, dressed equally as silly as that. Speaking of speaking <laughs> of raves in, in Toronto, like I mean. Are they different from any other raves? Did, what what kind of music is actually played there? Is it like Canadian, like Canadian EDM? music? Canadian EDM. <laughs> Canadian, <laughs> Canadian EDM exists. Uh, yeah, like, it does. No, it's. <laughs> yeah, but you, it's really just it's all EDM, really. It's all kind of the same. Um, it's very I'd simple. say it's. Uh, depends on. It really depends on who the DJ is. The ones that we used to go to. I used to go to these ones called Hullabaloo, and uh, Happy to Be Hardcore and. Is what they, that's what the, the CDs they recorded off were from that. Oh, so and it was like a lot of happy hardcore, and then it would sort of break down for a few hours. You get a lot of like, uh, like uh, hard trance or, uh, or hardcore. And then nowadays, it's a lot of, it starts more in the hardcore and then moves into dubstep and into, uh, you know, a lot of stuff similar to that. You know, a lot of the wub, 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 wub. And I think now it's going into electro, a lot of electro stuff. So stuff that sounds like like remixed tech, uh, music from the disco era. So a lot of that kind of weird electronic reverberations and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, but, so. but, but this makes perfect. I, actually, I think has a legitimate question there because EDM culture actually differs a little bit as you go around the world, right? The music itself mm -hmm. in South Africa, you would find in clubs you would find more house music, right? Like mm -hmm. yeah. chilled out, relaxed house music. It's sometimes deep house, minimal techno, lounge, lounge stuff, right? And then in in yeah. when you go to Europe, it's gonna be like techno and hard style and trance <laughs> and fucking that is. <laughs> dance mix 95 <laughs> Euro, Euro dance and it, it comes from its origins as well Euro dance, it, yeah. it, it comes from its origins as well house music started 
strangely enough, in the United States in uh, uh, Chicago, and <clears throat> then Detroit started techno. That was it was called Detroit techno, but that one hit in the the, uh, the European countries. Well, the house music kind of stayed in America and just it moved around how the popularity of it is. But definitely in like Germany and those places and they, the clubs that they have there are still ran like they did it in the days where it just started and was still part of this underground scene. Like Club Tunnel, for example. It's like this big basement tunnel. It's like really freaking creepy when you walk in there and it's this... Tunnel, tunnel Trance Force is the album's name. And it's this overdriven trance and hard style music just throughout the entire night. When what I happens walk, when you get out of the other side? What, when I walk into a place like that, it feels like I'm getting an epileptic seizure and then I try to walk out. It's not that I don't like the music, but it's just so constant. It's just... Overwhelming. That sounds like the club I'd want to go to. <laughs> Dude, I that's going to be like this that I'd is like so to go good. To. Oh, 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 this is amazing. The lights and the lasers and the <laughs> it's always quicker than 145 BPM. Nothing slower than that. There's a uh, 138. Got to stop it at 138. That's the that's the money number. Mm. That's yeah. like the, this. This immediately just reminds me of like uh, a vine that I saw from Scott Styrus or something like that. Or I think it was Chris Lepore, actually. Chris Lepore was the guy. And like he's lying down on the ground, he's just going dot 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 with his eyes closed, like in this weird seizure, and then like, what the hell's wrong with him? And then they like have this shot of him singing to the same song in like this massive club. And like doing it pretty much that. And I'm kinda of sitting there going like, Yeah, that's about it. Because the thing is, is that I don't dance, I don't like dancing, I really don't like doing any of that stuff. Like it's it's not my scene. If I ever get taken to a place like that, I will sit and find the like, I will I will find a seat, and I will sit in that chair, for the next, fucking four hours, and watch people. <laughs> oh, so you're that guy. I'm that guy. I am that guy. I'm the creepy guy in the corner that is always leering at everybody else, and everybody else thinks that I'm a pervert. <laughs> Drop that. Drop back to being a wallflower. Either either a pervert or um, a rent boy, but then again, rent boy doesn't necessarily actually like ex explain me that much because I don't necessarily do things with or without money anyway. <laughs> um, anyways, guys, we're actually end of time. I think yeah. uh, we have to call it a night. Yeah, and I mean, Cajun has his uh, lovely little bry going on. Yeah, I do. I obviously I'm not going to use propane. I've got to use real wood and you know, barbecue this meat. <laughs> Dude, yeah. Dude rather, yeah. rather let a South African do it and then you see. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. In, invite one of us over at one point, like, you know, just for the fuck of it. And just, we'll, we'll show you how to brine meat terribly. Yeah. <laughs> news, news report tomorrow, 10 furries die in a house fire after trying to barbecue <laughs> on a deck. <laughs> after after uh, trying a South African braai. <laughs> Entire building burns down. <laughs> Jokes aside, that's how a raisin slumbush burned down. That is literally how it burned down. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I feel a bit bad. Luckily, it was another. Well, we uh, yeah, we've got a fire pit that's pretty. It's all surrounded by, uh, oddly enough, asbestos um, padding. So <laughs> what? If, if something goes wrong, yeah, it's we. It, I, I found this hilarious. I didn't know you could still buy asbestos, but apparently you can. <laughs> so it's this giant compressed piece of it feels like cement yeah. and what it is is a little bit of cement and then inside it it's actually a layer of asbestos and I was like oh I want to buy that <laughs> that's never going to light on fire you still get asbestos fires this side like fireplaces specifically for you know yeah. like that that stuff like you put it in there and it heats up a room like you would not believe oh my goodness okay oh, crazy yeah anyway guys uh, thanks for listening we really appreciate your uh uh, attendance, etc., etc. I'm going to go through the list here. Thank you, Rakuin, Cuddle Wolf, Zanduin, Victor, Kinkin Zede, Cajun. Thanks for being on here. We really appreciate your hey, anytime. Your attendance, everything like that. Captain Neon, the awesome, um, Totem, and Ninjin. I'm really glad that Ninjin's be. <laughs> I'm really glad that Ninjin's become like a <laughs> a. Uh, <laughs> 
a staple for for this group and things like that. And I mean, the rest of you guys, like again, like we really really like it when you guys are always commenting, and it's it's awesome. We really enjoy sort of like churning out this kind of content for everyone. So yeah, uh, thanks for listening. It's nine thirty. So most of us are either going to go to sleep or I'm going to go drink some more. Um, <clears throat> and Cajun, good luck with your uh, furry bry. Yes, of course. Um, and obviously Scratch and Unpoo, thank you very much for being here for this long. Without, like, leaving. <laughs> yeah. <Cool>. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, yeah. Cheers, okay. guys. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Cheers. You're on. Yeah, cheers, everybody. Have a good night. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay. That was a... Are we off yet?